Now, I've never really been too bothered about Stormcast in Age of Sigmar. I've never really been super interested in painting them, in using them in an army for the game. But what I do like are dragons, and this one is bloody gorgeous. The kit went together really well. I didn't have any issues with any of it. It tied it up really nicely. So there were very few mold lines. And the only part that I actually left separate was the rider, and that's just so that I could paint him separately to the dragon just to make it that little bit easier. Whenever I'm working on a larger model like this dragon, my philosophy is generally to try and get as much done with as little effort as possible in the early stages, especially when you've got something like this where the majority of this model is the dragon itself. So I'm using an airbrush now to get all the base coats down to get some rudimentary sort of highlights in there as well before moving on to a dry brush to pick out some detail and then moving on to a regular brush for the final step, which is then to pick out all of the smaller details. I like to work this way around for a couple of reasons. The first and foremost is that it just seems to make the most sense. The majority of this model is this color, it is this dragon. So it makes sense to use tools like this to get the majority of that done. But also it gives you a sense of achievement quite early on because the majority of the model is painted up in the colors that it's going to be and it is sort of more or less done. It then is just sort of picking the details out and you see the model come together really quickly. For the final highlight with the airbrush, I'm just aiming for the sort of edges of each of the folds in the wings just to brighten those up a little bit. So as I mentioned, to pick out all of those lovely details, all the scales and all the detail on the wings, I'm just going to give it a quick dry brush and rather than dry brushing this with another red, I'm going to go with a bright orange just because that will help lighten up those top areas of the highlights whilst also contrasting quite nicely against the red. I'm just being really subtle with this, I'm not going on too hard with it, taking off most of the paint and then just, just on those top edges giving that a nice highlight. The orange on the top layer has done a really good job of picking out the top highlights, but unfortunately the shadows now aren't shadowy enough. So what I'm going to do is go back in with a purple glaze and then just sort of spray that with the airbrush into the recesses just to darken those down. I'm using purple rather than a black or rather than red, just because purple over the top of the red will look really, really nice once it's dried. Now this is the stage of painting larger models where I sometimes get a little bit fed up uh, and that's because you've gone from having loads and loads and loads of progress getting stuff done really quick because you've been airbrushing because you've been dry brushing to then having to swap to a regular brush and really just slow it down pick out the details it can seem like you're not making anywhere near as much progress but picking out all these details and doing all this sort of stuff is really important at this point, the dragon looked very red, and I know that it is, it is a red dragon, that is the colour that I'm painting it, but I wanted to pick out a few areas just to break up that red and orange look. So I've, there's some of these scales on like his arms, on these wings, that I'm going to paint in black and then highlight up, and they're going to be a different colour which will just help to break up all of the red on the model. I think I've said before in videos that I like to paint in sections. So I've gone from painting all of the red part of the dragon. Now I'm painting all of these sort of black shell areas. And then because I've got the color on there for the highlight, I'm going to paint all the claws. I painted these in sort of a, a bluey gray, just because it's a little bit different than painting them ivory. They'll stand out a little bit more. And it also ties them in with the shell armor parts of the model. Once all these parts are done, the dragon itself is pretty much finished. There's a couple of details on there, like his teeth and his, his tongue and things like that. But now it's time to move on to the armor section, which I'm classing as a different part of the model because it's not part of the dragon itself. It is the armor that he's wearing. Now, normally what I'd have done with this is that I've gone with silver for the armor because it's a nice cold color. It would have contrasted really nicely against the red on the scales on the rest of the dragon. But instead I've gone with a brassy color and I'm doing this purely because I 
sort of realized that I fall into using the same colors for the same things quite a lot. Like silver is my go-to metallic. And I wanted to try and mix things up a little bit and use some different colors. So I decided to go with a nice brassy color, give it that nice warmth with a wash as well, and then a final highlight, and then add in some weathering just to add some verdigris in there, just to sort of dial it down and add a little bit of coolness back into the final color. All of the paints that I'm using today are from the two thin coats range from Transatlantis Games. I've put graphics up in the top corner every time I change colour and I'll put a list down in the description if you're interested in picking any of them up. I do have to say though that the metallics from this range, from both Wave 1 and Wave 2, are absolutely phenomenal. They are the best metallics that I have ever used, hands down. All that was left to do on the Dragon now was just a lot of little details. There was lots of little straps that were holding the armor on. I had to paint his tongue, his teeth, random bits of fur that were around the model. And once all of those details were finished, I was like, oh, wow, this is looking, this is looking pretty good. Now I need to give him a base worthy of the rest of the model. Now I knew I wanted the base to be a bit darker so that it contrasts nicely with the dragon because the dragon is quite bright because that is my painting style, but I didn't want it to be boring. So I decided to go with a sort of rundown, ruined, sort of swampy, overgrown look. For this, I just base coated the stonework that the dragon stood on in a gray. Wasn't particularly too fussed on getting everything covered in gray because this is going to get weathered up a lot. And then I added some of the dirty down moss to that adding that on and then going back in with some a wet brush and thinning that down. I added loads of verdigris to the metalwork on this. I wanted this to be like properly ruined and properly sort of distressed and, and weathered. Now for my basing, I feel like I've gotten fairly lazy recently. Um, I tend to just put a bit of glue on it, dip it in some Keat Came In Scenics and then call it a day. And because this is quite a big base, I wanted to do something a bit more. I wanted to add some puddles, I wanted to add lots of variety in colors. So I added some muddy ground texture first. And then once that was dry, I went back in with the uh, Dirty Down Moss effect and added that into a few select areas just to give a bit of color variety. And then what I did is I went in with some UV resin and applied that to a couple of spots where I sort of bundled up the mud just cause I wanted that to be like a muddy puddle. Once all that was dry and set, I then did go in with Geek Gaming Scenics. I used Patchy Plains and Arid Earth, just so that there was a nice variety in colors from sort of just plain dirt to then dirt with a bit of vegetation in it. We'll come back to this later on once it's fully dry, but for now, it's time to crack on with that rider. For the rider himself, I decided to go with a silver for his armor rather than the sort of traditional Stormcast gold. I think this is what he's painted like on the box art as well, but I went with this because I wanted to go for something that would contrast with all of the bronze and all of the red on the dragon. My main goal while I was painting up the rider was to make him look interesting enough and fully painted and not just sort of skipping out on any of the detail, but also I didn't want to overdo him and take away from the dragon itself. That has been the main part of this painting project, has been the dragon, and I'm really happy with how it looks. So I don't want to put something too gaudy or over the top on top of that dragon and take away from the work that I've done on that. Now, when it came to painting the cape, I did think about giving him a blue cape to go with the sort of blue tint in the armor that I'd done and to contrast again with the red on the dragon. But I really like painting red capes, so <laughs> it stayed red. I did add a little bit of blue on the skull thing that he's got in his hand, just to give a little bit of a different color. But I was actually pretty happy with how this turned out. I think I've added enough detail without it being too over the top. Now we're on to the, the final, final leg, and it's adding all of the various tufts to the base. Now that that's all fully dried and all fully set, and this was actually a really, really therapeutic process. Adding in lots of different flower colors, lots of different grass colors, different sizes, different varieties. It really sells that sort of natural look because grass doesn't grow in the same shape, in the same size, in the same color. It is a variety of things. So adding all of these different varieties really helps that base come to life. I'm not sure there's any greater feeling than tying up the base rim on a project that you've really enjoyed working on and knowing that it's finished. 
I said at the start of the video that I don't really like Stormcast, but I've had so much fun painting this model that I think I might have to start a small Stormcast army just so I can see this on the table. It seems a shame to just leave it in a cabinet, right? Regardless of any potential future project plans, I had a lot of fun working on this model and I hope you guys have enjoyed seeing it come together too whilst watching the video. If you did, leave a like down below and if you've picked up anything new or if you've taken any inspiration from this video, let me know down below in the comments. My name is Josh and until next time guys, enjoy your hobby.